What did I get myself into? Welcome to the Ugly Duckling Challenge. This challenge is hosted by Corey from Desert DIY. I'm going to leave a link to a playlist of all the participants' videos in my description box down below. Be sure to go check that out when you're done watching. I start by taking off all the hardware, and while I'm taking the hardware off, I have to take out each drawer and examine them. This drawer front is coming off, so I'm using my Tight Bond Original Wood Glue and a paintbrush and just painting some glue on. Then I take a piece of scrap wood and my rubber mallet and I just pound that drawer front right back in. I'm using this scrap wood as a barrier so that I don't crack my drawer front. Now when I have each drawer out, I need to go in and clean the inside frame of the dresser and it is filthy. So I'm taking my vacuum and I'm just gonna vacuum up all the little dust bunnies and all the dirt and dust. And then I go in with my TSP cleaner and I wipe the entire inside and outside down really, really well. It actually <laughs> took me about four buckets of TSP. It was pretty dirty. Then I continue making my repairs and this drawer front is actually cracked. So I'm taking my tight bond wood glue and I'm just gluing the crack back together There's a little chunk of my drawer front missing, so I'm using quick wood on this. But in order to get the quick wood to stick, I need to just pound in a couple of finishing nails so that my quick wood has something to grip on. Quick wood is an epoxy. It, it feels like a putty, and all you do is knead it together until it's nice and soft, and then you can just like clay form it into whatever form you want. It dries really, really fast, and once it's dry, you can sand it also if you need to. But I like to apply it and then just form it into the form I want because it is really tricky to sand because it's epoxy, so I don't actually like to sand it. I would rather just have it in the form and let it dry. Now, there's a lot of crayon in the insides of these drawers, and a really easy way to get rid of it is just to use one of those magic erasers. You can use um, this a cheap brand. You know, they have like the generic magic eraser. Those work great. Or you can use uh, Mr. Clean's magic eraser. They work great too. But those are the key to getting crayons off for me. And then I'm just using my scraper. There's some kind of hard candy or something on the inside. So I just scrape that right off, make sure that my drawers are nice and clean. Now for this top, it is a mess. Somebody had already tried to work on it. I'm not gonna sand the entire thing. I'm just smoothing it out. I'm gonna paint over this. But before I do any painting, I want to shellac the entire piece because, of course, there is an odor. I'm pretty sure this is an older dresser, probably sat in someone's house for, you know, 20, 30 years. And sometimes they just tend to have odors. So I'm going to shellac the inside and the outside of my piece. And this is how I do it. I use the shellac and a sponge and I give it one or two coats. This case, it's not so bad, so I'm only doing one coat. But I just wanted to show you that I thoroughly shellac each and every drawer, the inside of the frame, the top, the sides, the back, just everywhere. I was having technical difficulties and at two points, my camera went out. So there's one thing you did miss, the middle drawer front that would not close. I did have to sand the top of that down. It's not noticeable and I only had to sand about an eighth of an inch, but I just wanted to let you know that that was another piece of the prep work. Now here I'm using Dixie Bells in the navy. It's just a dark navy color as a base coat. My shellac is completely dry, so I'm giving the entire dresser one coat of in the navy. 
I use my water mister just to thin it out and make sure that I don't have a lot of brush strokes. But it, this is just the base and I kind of have an idea of what I'm gonna be doing with this. So it is going to be covered. The only reason I'm using a really, really dark color is because if it does come through, say at the corners or maybe in the edges, I'm gonna be using some would you bends. So if it comes through in my would you bend, I want it to be dark, like a low light. So that's why my base coat is so dark. And I wanted the inside of the frame to be the darker color. It'll just look better with the overall idea that I have. Now I'm adding a would you bend. This is a really large would you bend and it comes with two of them. I'll leave, make sure that I leave the links in the description box below for these would you bends so you can see which numbers they are. I finally got myself a proper heat gun. I got a Wagner heat gun from Amazon for around $25. And I need to point out that I should not be using a heat gun on this plastic tarp. The blue tarp underneath did melt in some spots. I don't know why I wasn't thinking, but that is what happened. So now I'm using my tight bond wood glue and I'm just gluing it. I'm just spreading that glue with a paintbrush. Then I apply it to the drawer front right in the center. And at this point, I have no idea where I'm going to put some pulls, but I know it's gonna need pulls. I just figured, I don't know, I would get it on there and then I'll go from there. I use my heat gun one more time just to make sure that that would you bend is on there really good. And then I use my little brush and I get all that excess um, glue off of it. To balance out the big would you bend in the middle, that's going in the center of the dresser, I'm gonna add these two little would you bends to the sides. And I think it'll have a really nice balance when you're looking at it. And using a bigger brush to clean up the glue, I find is the easiest way to do it. And then you just rinse your brush with some water afterwards. Now I could just continue putting that base coat of In the Navy on the rest of the dresser. I'm adding two coats of slick stick to my hardware. I want to add my hardware to the piece while I'm painting it, while I'm adding my second coat because I want them to also be painted. So I've chose my colors and I'm starting with Dixie Belle's Cobalt Blue. Cobalt Blue is like a really electric, really bright electric blue. To get the look I want, I'm applying this in a stippling motion. It's just kind of like I'm just pouncing. I'm, I'm patting it on there. I'm not brushing up and down and back and forth. I'm just pat, 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 pat <laughs> the entire time. And then right here at this point, I realized that I needed to paint a base coat of In the Navy on my hardware also. So I did that with all the hardware on the piece really quick. And then we're back to pat, pat, pat with our cobalt blue. And then we're gonna add our second color. And the second color I'm using is Tree Frog Green. And then my third color is gonna be the Gulf. That is also by Dixie Belle.
This is definitely one of those cases where it's ugly before it gets pretty. I always get myself a little freaked out when I'm doing pieces like this because you're like, oh gosh, it's just not right. But I know that if you just follow that process, it's gonna come out really pretty. And the process is really, it comes from you. There are no rules here. There's no um, like direction that says you have to put this color here or that color there. You really have to just rely on your own vision and what you see. So the process is I'm going to stipple the paint on. I need there to be a nice wet base over my base. So as you can see, you can see a little bit of that in the navy poking through. Not a lot. I don't want a lot of it. But you can see a little bit and that's sort of the low light. And then I'm using a lot, it looks like a lot of the Gulf and a lot of the Cobalt Blue, but I'm actually gonna cover that up. So while it's still wet on the Gulf, I'm gonna go in with my other color, which is that Tree Frog Green, and I'm gonna start putting it in there. And then this is where this blend starts to make sense. It's almost like from here on out, I just wanna use all the colors but I'm, I've also, I'm adding peacock. I haven't added peacock yet. That's another blue. But I'm now I'm gonna take all these colors. I'm gonna fill in where it doesn't, where that looks like there's too much cobalt blue. Or if it looks like there's too much in the Gulf, I'm gonna fill it in with another color. And then all the colors will be placed sporadically, but they will all blend. It sounds crazy, but just trust me, that's, that's how it works. Here's where I'm adding my fourth color. This color is called Peacock. This color really ties in the blend. I'm still using my water mister, just not as much as I normally do when I'm blending. For this look that we're going for, I, I don't want to use a ton of water because I don't want it to be super smooth and super blended. I do want it to have that sort of old world finish or maybe like it was under the sea for a really long time. I want it to be sort of rustic and grungy. So I'm not using a ton of water to make it really smooth. If you're enjoying this video, I would love it if you hit the like button. And if you're not already subscribed, you could subscribe. I upload every Friday around 2 p.m. Now I'm gonna use all four brushes with all the different colors and just blend it out so that it looks balanced.
and I keep this process up on the rest of the dresser, the entire front and both of the sides. I did a wash on the top of this piece with all four colors. If you want to see a wash, I will leave a link in the description box on how I do a color wash, but I did a wash on top using the four blues and I just used each color in a row and my, my camera did not record, so I didn't get it, but these are the colors I used and this is what the wash looked like afterwards. I apologize. I hate skipping a part of the video. Um, but if you look at the top, you can get an idea of what I did. And then now I'm using Dixie Belle's bronze patina paint. This can be activated by using the um, spray activator, but I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to use this as paint and make a wash. I've added about, it's a 50-50 mix of bronze patina paint and water. Now I'm going over this scary looking top with some of this bronze and I just want to make these streaks. I do this on the entire top of the piece. And I bring it around the front and I'm also going to add this bronze patina paint to the drawer fronts and to the hardware and to my wood you bends and just kind of all over the place. It's taking me just a little bit of time to get used to the thought of covering the paint that I just worked so hard on with the bronze patina. So I'm trying to get a, you know the feel of the paint so I don't put way too much on or cover too much. And it is really easy to remove with a rag if you make a mistake. So I like that about this paint, but I'm just kind of taking it easy at first. And then, cause you can always add more, you know, it's easier to add more and go light when you're first doing it other rather than caking it on and then having to figure out how to take it off. And I am not done with the top, so don't be afraid. This is just a process and I'm waiting for that patina paint to dry on the top before I move on to my last step. And I'm also using a rag to just kind of smudge it in certain spots. Then I'm using the softest touch with my brush and I'm just going to add sort of like it's kind of dripping a little bit on the corners of each of the drawers. This is the moment I feel like it's finally coming together. And I add more bronze on all the raised edges and most of the corners, just anywhere where I think it could use some character. Especially over the wood you bends. It looks so pretty on the raised details of the wood you bends. Then I did not forget that I needed some pulls for that middle center drawer by that big wooji bend. So I'm using these pulls here and I'm just covering them with some slick stick. And then after I slick stick them, I need to drill my holes. I have one on each side of that wooji bend. And then I'm gonna start painting them with all of my colors. I paint it with the cobalt, the peacock, the gulf. And that's actually it. I did not use the tree frog green for the pulls.
while I wait for my pools to dry, I start painting the feet. I, I clean the feet with some Dawn dish soap and I let them dry on my counter. I scrubbed them really good. And then I'm using my bronze patina paint and I'm just painting the entire, the whole leg. Now for the top, let's finish this top. It's dry, now I'm going over with the same bronze and I'm doing a wash. I am just gonna do a wash over the entire thing. You're still gonna be able to see all those colors underneath this bronze over it is gonna tone it down a whole lot and the bronze on the top will match the bronze on the legs and in the body and we'll have a really nice balance and of course our final step is to seal the entire piece we're gonna use Dixie Bell's clear coat in satin and when I was done with the top, I did have to take all of the handles back out of the drawers so I could seal the drawers and then seal the handles. So I'm gonna save you guys from seeing all of that, but that's what happened. Now let's rewind to the beginning and here is what our piece looked like when we first started. It is just massive. Here's what it looks like today. I love the close-ups on this piece. I think the colors all together look really, really pretty. Don't forget to check out the playlist in my description box because all the other participants of the challenge, their videos are in there too, and they're gonna be great. I wanna say thank you to Corey from Desert DIY for hosting this challenge. It is my favorite challenge. I love the idea of taking an ugly duck and turning it into a beautiful swan. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, I would love it if you hit the like and subscribe button and I will see you next week.